Distinguished guests, friends and colleagues, good morning. Let me start by expressing our deep gratitude to the World Bank for hosting this week's important event, the Global Wildlife Program Conference on Engaging Local Communities in Wildlife Conservation. It's a very long title, but it is a critical topic. I very much regret that I'm unable to be there with you today due to other commitments, but I am delighted that the CITES Secretariat is well represented by Liu Yuan, and I have no doubt that he will make an excellent contribution. The CITES Secretariat and the World Bank are long-standing partners, including through the International Consortium on Combating Wildlife Crime, known as IQIC, which we signed back in 2010. And we work very closely with many of the other organisations and people present at the conference. We do see our role as being to help connect CITES and CITES parties to other organisations and processes, as well as to assist parties access financial resources to meet their obligations under the Convention. Noting that CITES, unlike most other international instruments, has a compliance mechanism, and it does take compliance measures where these commitments are not met, such as through the use of trade suspensions. The world's wildlife, both charismatic and lesser known species, is facing many challenges. While habitat loss is recognised as the biggest threat, the poaching of and illicit trafficking in wildlife poses the most immediate threat to many iconic species. The focus of this conference is of great importance, as addressing the ownership of and the wealth derived from wildlife is critical to the survival of species. This is particularly acute when considering the interrelationship between local communities and the wildlife they share space with. While law enforcement seems to attract most of the public attention, CITES views tackling illicit wildlife trafficking through a much wider lens. CITES also seeks to address local livelihoods and demand reduction, and this broader approach to tackling illicit wildlife trafficking is well reflected in the outcomes of our last COP in Bangkok in 2013, as well as in the documents tabled for the forthcoming CITES COP17 to be held in September of this year in South Africa. Several of the documents that have been submitted for COP17 on livelihoods and rural communities, including one draft resolution that calls for the establishment of the Rural Communities Committee of the Conference of the Parties. The landmark UN General Assembly resolution on tackling illicit tra trafficking in wildlife, adopted last year, recognises the fundamental legal framework provided by CITES in regulating international trade in wildlife and in combating illicit trafficking in wildlife. But it also goes on to stress that CITES should contribute to tangible benefits for local people, which reflects the language used in the outcome document from Rio Plus 20. While illegal trade decimates wildlife populations, it deprives local people of their livelihoods and in some cases impacts national economies and security, the parties to CITES also recognise that well-regulated trade can benefit both local communities and species. This trade can take many forms, from the wool of the vicuña to the skin of the crocodile or the bark of the African cherry tree and the protection of wildlife from poaching and smuggling can also secure the wildlife assets that form the basis of nature-based tourism experiences, which, when done properly, can generate significant local jobs and income. The various case studies in our CITES and Livelihoods program demonstrate many examples of a successful nexus between local livelihoods, the sustainable use of wildlife, both consumptive and non-consumptive, and wildlife conservation. Where communities gain benefits from wildlife, it can offer a long-term self-supporting solution for improving livelihoods, lifting people out of poverty, and achieving conservation benefits, including through reducing illegal wildlife trade. CITES is a good tool to engage with and to empower local communities, and its effective implementation is well worth exploring in the national projects of the Global Wildlife Programme. Anyway, I think my time is up now, so let me close by thanking you again for involving CITES in this week's conference 
and I wish you every success with your extremely important work. Thank you.